My honk if you're Canadian bumper sticker was unexpectedly a huge hit with geese. <laughs> Try showering with dead people's body parts instead of soap, you won't believe the difference. In Spain, they love football so much, they even call soccer football. <laughs> when you Instagram my dead body, use Walden, but tag it, no filter. <laughs> okay, hi. Hey. hey. Woohoo! This, uh, woohoo! If your infant doesn't have a personal brand, they simply don't exist to me. <laughs> How do you expect an infant to hold their own in a competitive preschool environment without a social media presence to bolster their personal brand? <laughs> it simply doesn't happen. Nice, nice. Now, I heard that this city is worse than New Orleans. <laughs> Do you agree or disagree? Wait, hands in the air for agree. Hands in the air for disagree. Where am I? <laughs> uh, it seems that you don't have strong feelings about this. That's, that's okay. Sometimes there's a local rivalry between cities and I like to stir shit up and cause the hate to escalate. Um, I was in Reno, Nevada, and uh, I was like, I'm going, to, I'm going to Salt Lake City tomorrow. And they're like, boo. And then they're like, sorry. And I was like, wow, you guys don't like Salt Lake City. But then I went to Salt Lake City and they didn't really care about Reno and they didn't really care about Las Vegas either. They don't really care out there. But you never know what you're gonna get. This poem is called, When I'm Moving My Birds, There Can Be Many Birds Who Get Loose and Surround Me, Then I Am In A Cloud Of Birds. <laughs> Dang, I hate turtlenecks. They put my son out of business, my son makes giraffe necks. And I can't believe Owl City is selling an actual t-shirt made of human tongues. I overheard someone say, if I had my way, life would be one long Owl City concert. I was like, hell yeah, woman. I am a bird. And I know many birds, by the way, all of whom I love. I want my obituary to say peck to death by birds. And I don't want it to be lying. I want to earn it. Sometimes when I'm walking home, I will arrive at my house, but I don't feel ready to go in. So I keep walking around the block until I'm ready to go in. This is how I know I'm a true artist and romantic. <laughs> BRB, smoking like five hookahs while driving. <sighs> Anybody relate to that last line? Man, woo, hookahs, man, I love them. <laughs> I don't never have smoked a hookah. hookah I'm hookah virginal. <laughs> nice. Okay, this is a this is a little little poem called "Airmail My Mom a Purse Full of Meg Ryan's Shit," <laughs> and um, the poem is the best way to win a race is to love how it feels to be running. Mm. <laughs> now. That's the end of the poem, but that's, that's that school planner shit. <laughs> that's that motivational poster shit, and that's gonna be 20 years, that's gonna be in the school planners, you know, up at the top of the page with the birds. And it'll say the best way to win a race is to love how it feels to be running. Dash Steve Rodenbach in his poem, Airmail My Mom, Perks Full of Meg Ryan's Shit. Um, it's coming! Nice. My whole family is emo, so yes, I'm offended by your comment. Definitely don't expect to see me back on your website again. <laughs> this poem is called Having Sex With You is Almost As Fun As Making Pinewood Derby Cars With My Dad. <laughs> Are you the internet? Because I want to spend all day with you in my room. Then, finally go out to a public place, but still only pay attention to you. <laughs> nice. 
Now, is a, now comes the time for a poem we've all been waiting for, frankly. And uh, it's about time that I read this one called uh, Freeze My Poop Using Colder Poop. Another fan favorite, so thank you. For your de thank you for demanding this poem and all the people yelling that I read it. It's been really pumping me up, so. In the countryside where my dad lives, it is beautiful with windmills and stars. And I know we can help each other achieve for free the fulfillment that corporations are trying to sell us. Fuck yeah, dude. Justin Bieber is my fucking dad. <laughs> Nothing is promised in the future. Right now is a time to be with people. And fuck any poet who wouldn't tell their audience I love you because it's a cliche. If you're reading this, I love you. If you're alive, I love you. <laughs> Everybody I see hurting and I don't want them to hurt. I want you to be okay. I don't know how to stop you from hurting, but I will try to do it. I wish I was better at it. I want to stand for what is right to me. I don't want to do anything that I think is bad for humans or other animals or anyone. I want to work harder than I have been. I want to be hugging you. I wish that I could take care of you somehow. I don't want you to be cold or alone. You are beautiful and deserve to feel good. Just be very aware of what kind of person you want to be, okay? And then be that kind of person as much as you can. If you mess up, just get back to it. I love the simple and beautiful trees. I love the simple and wonderful rain. I am excited to be in the world. Attention, people who don't think you are doing enough to help others. You are beautiful for having that fear. You are my kind of person, and I love you. If I'm successful on earth, then my life will seem like a hug that took 80 years to give. A hug is a perfect poem. And I am terrified of getting attacked by alligators. <laughs> At the dance, I think about how suits and uniforms are the external embodiment of the emotional deadness beaten into men by patriarchal socialization. I think about how boys are raised to be weapons. And why does it cost so much to be alive? I fucked Shrek and blew him for $190. And after all this, I still support fundraising efforts to give iPhone 5s to wild animals. Our life is so weird, I'm sorry. Please, recognize your death is coming and cultivate love toward everyone you can. Oh yeah, so Baton Rouge, nice. Oh, I see that I'm in Baton Rouge, New uh, in Louisiana. <laughs> oh, ha ha ha. Uh, do y'all refer to yourself as? Uh, oh wait, never mind. Uh, no, never mind. That I thought I misthought how of your how your name. Was. Spell. Um, I was. I thought. I thought I had something, but it was not an idea. Okay. Now, I um. Woohoo! Woo! Uh, I didn't know how to pronounce the city name. I thought it was Baton Rouge. I don't really know that I actually thought it was either one, but I just pronounced it that way. But and then I thought it'd be funnier though if I thought it was Baton Rouge. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. Does anybody have a story of somebody who thought it was that? <laughs> No, it's obvious that it's not, but it shouldn't be, because they're spelled the same way. Somebody sh should fuck that one up. No. Y'all can, can do that, though, if somebody's visiting from out of town, and they say it, and you're like, no, it's Baton Rouge. <laughs> it's spelled, it's pronounced that way. Okay, nice. Now, um... A lot of my work engages with the internet in some way. Um, my, I'm actually most known for my YouTube videos. Um, and I've done other things with image macro, image, image based poem things, image macro, little wacky little things. I've got some in my book, more on the internet. And um, done things with Twitter and all that. But one thing that I've just done sporadically here and there is these chat poems. Internet chat, the chat rooms. And uh, I made this one on omegle.com chat, which I do not recommend the site. Um, it's not a great place, but 
Um, I was doing this a little bit in 2011, and the thing about it is that when you do that, with, you're chatting with a stranger like on Chat Roulette, you know, and what happens is you're making a poem with somebody who does not know they're in a poem. <laughs> and then, so that is kind of interesting sometimes. But anyway, this is my best little chat poem with the internet stranger. Stranger says, hey, I said, party inside of a dead horse. <laughs> Your conversational partner has disconnected. <laughs> now this next one is a birthday card inscription. Woo! Can we hear it for the birthday cards? Woo! Yeah. 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 That's what I'm talking about. Hell fucking yeah. That's what I'm talking about. You know, there's this scene in Fast and the Furious 6, which I just rewatched the other day, where, um, where, uh, Tyrese, Tyrese's character is like joking around and he says a joke that's sort of like making fun of Paul Walker's character and Paul Walker does this, where he, it just cuts to him for like one second and he's like <laughs> and I thought it was really funny. <laughs> so he's like smiling so big but the middle finger, I think middle finger is going to come back in a big way because who hasn't been using it for a while? Who is like, I have not done that in at least five years. But see, we can bring it back. <laughs> um, just watch that, watch Fast and Furious 6 and you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> nice. Um, anyway, this is the birthday card idea. To my nephew on his birthday, I'll choke your dad. <laughs> I don't care. I'm not afraid. <laughs> it's just a little one. <laughs> Woo! Okay, next poem. This one is called, At Every Moment the Fact That You Are Floating on a Rock in Space is Valid and Important to Consider a mother, Among Your Other Concerns. It's actually sort of mashed up from some stuff, some, some new stuff, and then some stuff from one of my previous books called If You Don't Love the Moon, You're an Asshole. <laughs> um, and this, because this book, what it is, is it's called Live My Life, Selected in New Poems. And so what it is, is that um, I basically, I've, I've been self-publishing my whole life. <laughs> my whole life. <clears throat> and, um, and so basically that means I can do whatever I want with my books, which is kind of fun sometimes. I, like I, I don't, like I put this on the back of my book, which is an advertisement for the sky. It says, this is an advertisement for the sky. Go outside and look up. It is free. <laughs> and then this one has this rant that says quit dairy and it's a rant about the dairy industry. <laughs> Fuck the dairy industry! <laughs> Down with dairy. Um, which I could elaborate upon. Maybe I will, probably I won't. But, <clears throat> um, but anyway, that's been fun, but also I've done things like in that moon book that I mentioned, I, I put selfies in there. That was a very rare choice. I was like, that would be funny if I just put a bunch of selfies in my poetry book. And I did it. And I put 23 selfies in there, and they were some of my best selfies of my life. I really, I was, it was a good year for my selfies. I was like in a new relationship. I was like impressing, I was trying to impress somebody with these selfies. It was a good year for selfies, and so I put them in this book. Anyway, though, I guess what I decided to do is that I wanted to sort of rip apart some of my old books and put them out of print and then have this one book that has like all the stuff that I still like and remixed and it's, oh, it's, it's a lot of fun. So anyway, this is, a, this is a poem in there or parts of it though. Um, Dear reader, I love you. And I'm the only person on earth who loves you, so you better love me also. <laughs> Imagine a world in which all alcohol consumption was replaced by people hanging out with dogs. A man goes on a month long bender playing with dogs in his apartment. <laughs> Rebellious teens partying with dogs. Dude, let's swing by the animal shelter, pick up some dogs for the party. I posted an Owl City song on my Tumblr, and it only got two notes. How am I supposed to help people if they refuse to help themselves? Question about land before time. How is their narrative? <laughs> there was a story in my hometown of a local farmer who got revenge on another man by putting a dead cow in his driveway during his child's birthday party. 
Imagine someone eating and screaming, like eating a full meal and screaming constantly between mouthfuls. <laughs> See if you can fit that banana in your dad's ass. Could probably become a common saying. Like, how do you like them apples? Mom, the stars are beautiful. Mom, I love them stars. I want to put my sweatshirt hood up, but it's already up. I want to write 666 in all caps. The wind blows the trees. Mom, fuck everyone who has ever lived. That's my angsty teen poetry life. And who here is rocking the fuck out tonight? No hey, hey, uh, no limits. Who here loves horses? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm fucking talking about, man. I love I love them things, man. I can't get enough. Um I'll switch over I'll switch over to reading out of this book for a while. I might go back to that book a little if we feel like it. Um Wait, no. I'm going to do a, th it's a little bit different thing from this because I feel a, a mood in my air. In, my, in the air in the night. <laughs> Phil Collins. Um, Philip. Um, okay, I will read this poem called Sleep With Me Until We Are Birds at the End of the World. I'm crying with my face on the side of a buffalo. It rains on my mouth. There's nothing for me to say in the rainstorm. It is just a rainstorm that I am in. The sad men of my country are too much. America, I am not bored with my life. America, I am alone, but I am not completely alone. I am on the internet. When you are dead, I think you will miss your problems. You will miss how everyone is a separate person. You will miss how every person, every tree, every body of water, every city, every single thing is different and has its own way and its own personality. Go somewhere on a mountain. Anywhere on the mountain, your cat seems awesome. <laughs> This is my best October of my life. Everything in the world makes me hurt. Die with me, 60-year-old man. Die with me, 40-year-old man. I want to be dead in a tractor tire for a year. There is nothing left to wait for now. It is six in the morning, and I am calling you something bird-related. <laughs> nice. Now that, now that, that's what I'm talking about. Now, who here loves that fucking game Yahtzee? They, they don't mind saying, now who here almost never gets a Yahtzee in that game though. They almost, and they hate that. But it, sometimes they do and they're like, nice. But other times they're like, mm, I didn't get a Yahtzee. That's what I'm talking about. Woohoo! <laughs> We're fucking partying hard tonight. Motherfuckers wanna come in here, try to stop the party. It'll just be a, just be a wave of metal fingers coming at them. Cause when the big house is rocking, don't come knocking. And when Baton Rouge is, Knock, is knocking them out of the park. Don't come to stop them. Nice. Now this, this is my book of stories, which is very rare because I have, uh, I, I have called myself a poet and I have um, made YouTube videos and all this, but I did not write stories at all. I do not read that much fiction. Um, but I started writing these stories and I really enjoyed it. And so I decided to do a whole book of them. And that's just, that's what you call following your heart right there. Because there, there was no logical, it did not fit into a clean or clear or marketable or interesting idea for, of a career trajectory, I felt. It's like, that's not a very cool thing to do, probably. Uh, but it, they're very fun to me, though. So you can't argue with results. Am I right? <laughs> Or what? <laughs> Woohoo! Now, <laughs> woo! Okay. Now, what if I got killed when I was up here? <laughs> nice. That'd be like a little, that'd be weird. <laughs> Could happen. Now, um, this one is called The Correct Name for a Bunch of Bananas is a Hand, and a Single Banana is Called a Finger. That's a true fact that I learned. Um, I think it's true. It was online. And, <laughs> 
there's a lot of websites that have banana facts that you can look up. One, another, another, another banana fact that you might like is that banana trees are not trees. They're banana plants. They should not be called trees. And that's supposedly a, a true fact. And another one is that bananas technically are berries. A lot of people know this. It's kind of a wacky fact. Bananas technically count as berries. <laughs> and avocados do, but it's like certain berries actually do not count technically as berries, which is not, it's not cool. It's really a problem. I'm really up to that, let's, I'm, I'm about to change that, and that's why I'm here. <laughs> but, but let's just get into the book here. Let's get into the book, all right. Sarah was one year old. Little baby, wah, wah. <laughs> Too bad for her. I'm older. I'm 14. I'm 14 and four months. I was born during a meteor shower and it shows in my personality. Wah, wah. Cry about it. Take it to the bank. See if they can cash it for you. I was born during a meteor shower and it shows in daily life. Anyhow, Sarah grew up eventually. She turned 13. Then she got in a 13 going on 30 type thing, and she was even older ages. Eventually, she grew to the age of, get this, 35. Wow. More weird stuff happened. Blah, blah, whatever. Then she was 50. Corn grew. Trucks drove with corn all over the world. Trucks drove with soybeans. Trucks drove with natural gas. Coffee beans. Cow manure. Global warming got worse. Sarah turned 60. People suffered. Hurricanes. Gazelles ran. Gazelles drank water. Lions ate gazelles. Some of the gazelles got away for a while. The sky went from dark to light and back to dark over 12,000 times. Sarah was alive. Sarah was alive and it was beautiful and hard. Sarah got away for a while. Then Sarah was 90 or something. Then Sarah was dead. Sarah was dead and it was beautiful and hard. Sarah got away for a long time then. The end. Wow. wow. <laughs> and everybody's dead silently because they are like, oh my god. <laughs> nice. Now, uh, this one's called I Want to Have Sex with Will Smith Watching. <laughs> now, who here has thought that exact thought? <laughs> one. <laughs> we got at least one. I was going for relatable, maybe two. Um, I was going for relatable titles. I thought I had, um, I thought I had captured the zeitgeist with that one. It's relatable to the right people. I'm filtering out. I'm sifting out all you losers from the pack, so that now I know who my target audience is. Woo hoo! Um, hi, Merle. You're looking hot as heck today. Good dog. That is what Michael said today when he woke up in life to see his cute and sexy dog Merle bear it all on national TV. What a nice day to be alive. Michael pours a hot cup of coffee into his bed sheets. There is no point to stay calm about life, Michael thinks now. There's absolutely no reason. Just go buck wild most of the time. <laughs> that is Michael's thought process now. But there's a backstory of how this happened. Well, Merle, the dog, was at a 100% gluten-free grocery store once to buy loaves of non-GMO rice bread. A wizard approached Merle with a gun and said, choose your destiny. Merle said without any pause at all, I wish to be a stripper on cable TV. The wizard says, that's not what I meant. Also, I'm not a wizard, I'm just robbing you. But then, Michael stepped out from behind a tall pile of bread, holding a sword. Wait one second, Michael said, attempting to save Merle's life. The robber says, who in heck are you? Michael says, I'm God's child. <laughs> And then a gamma ray burst coming from light years away happens to hit the earth directly. And suddenly everything is on fire and everyone is screaming. And within one minute, everyone on earth is dead. The end. <laughs> now, there's a couple factors to take in consideration when you're reading this story. 
a lot of scholars have been getting real hyped and buzzed about this one. And it's, I was like, hmm, why, why is this? It turns out that the scholars really love when there's really confusing things that happen. And one of the th confusing things that happen in this is when everybody on Earth dies in a flashback. <laughs> and that's like, hmm, well, how do we get to the present moment when people are not all dead if everyone single, every person died in, a, in the past? In the how do we really, how do we really work that one out? And that really gets a lot of scholars getting them bopping and getting them really grooving with this text. Now, the other thing that really dazzles these scholars and just dazzles them so hard is when there's this pun in the middle of the poem. Probably a couple of you noticed that Merle the dog is at the grocery store and Merle said without any pause at all. <laughs> and uh, that pause pun with the dog, that, was a, that really gets some scholars to go wild. And, uh, and the, it's actually one of the really greatest things if you're trying to impress scholars with your writing is probably to include that pun. Because I've only found only one other pun that rate, ranks equally with scholar satisfaction in national polls. And that is um, this pun where if you're talking about anything dog related and you say, that sounds rough. That's the only other pun that scholars really like as much as that one, on average, if you uh, taken by national polls. So that's really that's nice. Now, woohoo! All right. Now, um, who's feeling amped about this uh, waxing crescent moon phase? <laughs> Probably a couple of you seen it on the way over. It's, it's out there, maybe it's, it's falling down now, it might be about down, but it was out during the sunrise, I saw it. It's a nice, nice little phase, nice little first phase, and now we're amping the fuck up. And that's what I love about the waxing phases, because we, everybody loves the full moon, right? It's even on the calendars, it's in everything. Everybody knows the full moon, we have these stories about wolves, werewolves, and all this. It's a very loved moon phase, but I love the, the, the weeks leading up to it and the days leading up to it. Wax and Gibbous might be my favorite because of that. It's right before the full moon. Everybody's, oh, we're getting amped up. It's like Friday in general. You know, it's like, whoo, party's coming soon. But right now, we're still earlier on in the week, but we see it coming, man. We're like, nice, because this thing is waxing, dude. Woo! Waxing. Nice. Um... So I'd like to take a couple surveys. This is something I've been doing around the country and I've been trying to compare results from different geographical areas. Um, this first, what I'd like to do is if we all can raise our hands, of course you don't have to participate, but it's encouraged that everybody does. But the thing is, it's gonna be a survey like where you raise your hand for strongly agree, slightly agree, neutral, <laughs> slightly disagree, or strongly disagree. So the thing, the statement, the first statement to agree or disagree with is this statement, I feel nostalgic for the barbecue scenes in the Fast and Furious movies as if they were from my own life. <laughs> um, strongly agree. Hmm. Slightly agree. Neutral. Okay, slightly disagree. Strongly disagree. Wow. Um, interesting spread there. I feel like y'all were a little more spread out on that than, than, than a lot of places. A lot of places I go to, it's mostly neutral. People just are like, I don't care. Um, I don't care about those movies. Um, but uh, okay, I've got a, I've got another question for you. A couple places people have really related, and I've found it hmm interesting. In St. Louis, they were like very much they they were like yes. And I think actually here y'all were closer than most places to agreeing with that. So shouts out to the love of the Fast and the Furious movies and the barbecue scenes within. I have the box set. Huh? I have the box set. You have the box set, that's good. That's good, that'll, that'll be, he that's healthy. <laughs> now, um, uh, two, one, oh, okay, the next statement to vote on with strongly agree, slightly agree, et cetera, is uh, I would honestly watch Kid Rock jack off 
it doesn't even matter. <laughs> okay, so I uh, strongly agree. It matters. <laughs> uh, slightly agree. Uh, neutral. <laughs> uh, slightly disagree. And strongly disagree. Wow. Okay. This is this is different. This is something because I've been on a streak of going places. I thought it was New England that I was like, okay, people in New England are very willing to watch Kid Rock Jack off because they were getting very high votes of, yes, I would love to. Or like, okay, I will. <laughs> but we are not seeing that here. We're seeing a low response rate on the agree. We're seeing a high response rate on the disagree. That's very interesting. I'll be very interested in your response to my next question. Um, but I just want to say, this is one of the places that where people seem so far least willing to watch Kid Rock Jack off. Um, <laughs> and insisting that it does matter. <laughs> um, we will not watch Kid Rock Jack on. No, but I did have somebody last night in New Orleans who was like complaining about the questions because she was like, well, it does matter, but I really do want to watch him jack off. <laughs> and I was like, good point, the question is flawed. <laughs> but we need to work with the materials we've been given. Yeah. Um, okay, so here's the, um, but this is not, working with, this is the extended version of the question though that I've been asking people the last month or two. What if I change the question, to, the statement to be this? I would honestly watch Kid Rock jack off with his own music playing in the background. It doesn't even matter. Now, how do we feel? Strongly agree. That's awesome. Uh, slightly agree. Uh, neutral. <laughs> neutral on that. Uh, slightly disagree. And strongly disagree. Okay, still a lot of people on strongly disagree, but I think less. I, I think some people move toward agreeing on that. Um, and that's really interesting. I've seen consistently good results with that, with that variation. Um, of course, some people have been moved to more strongly disagree because they're like, no. But um, most people are. Most people will move toward agree. And um, you know, I just think if I was in charge of marketing that product or service, you know, I was like, oh, Kid Rock's jacking off live. I would be like, definitely, I would have that component while his own music plays in the background because it's like very. It's partly, it's, and some audiences is polarizing. And that's good for press as well. We got the haters make you famous, but a lot of people just love it more. They're more willing to check check it out, you know. <laughs> See the lifestyle in action. Steve, yeah, we have like time for one more. That's cool. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm gonna do a thing. Well, okay. First, I want to say that these books are for sale, and I don't know where the jar is, but I really do appreciate if you donate um, or buy these. Um, and I do have a credit card reader as well. This one is generally ten dollars. This one is generally 15. I could possibly be flexible on them. Um, and uh, what else do I wanna say? I've taken mostly like shitty Greyhound buses to get around, so it does make a difference when people donate, when people buy the books, because I've, I've cut my expenses so low that the difference between getting zero and getting 50 or the difference between 50 and 100 really does make a difference for me. So I encourage you to donate or buy a book. I can write stuff in the books as well. I want to end by reading these two things in a row that are sort of my my pieces that shit talk the police. Um, and it's a serious issue and um, a lot of my work is not that serious or it's pretty lighthearted a lot of times because I found that that's what I'm good at doing. That's what I really, that's my gift to the world I think is to make people laugh and smile. But um, but I'm trying to work in some of these more serious issues here and there where I can um, I feel it's almost a responsibility thing, especially since I have a lot of a younger audience a lot of times. So, so these are my pieces sort of that, um, that shit talk the police a bit. It's a serious issue in the US. The police kill over a thousand people every year. Um, it's mostly poor people of color. And it's people who are, you know, once they're labeled criminals and then talked about that way on the news and stuff, it's like, oh, well, he was reaching for a gun or he, he did this beforehand. And it's like, that doesn't change the fact that it was somebody's whole life 
that was shot and it was somebody's dad or it was somebody's brother or, or lover or something and um, so anyway that's just um, something to say but this one actually starts off kind of goofy and then it goes there but um, John was 10 year old wow young wow John was sitting in the bathtub the tub was dry and he was eating corn nuts off the floor I don't know Fuck off. <laughs> How am I supposed to know everything about the story? It's John's life, not mine. Why don't you ask him? <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. I'm sad about the police, government, and military acting on behalf of the United States and the world. I disagree with almost everything they do, and I am worried about the ideologies which allow them to justify their actions to themselves. How did they get those ideas in their head, and what other actions could that kind of belief system justify? Now I'm worried about the ideology inside of my own head, too. I was taught from a young age. I was taught to be a man, for example, and I am scared of how this is affecting my view of the world and humans. I have feelings about what is right and wrong in my head, and I don't trust them. I have feelings about what are my favorite things in the world, and I don't trust them. I learned everything from the previous humans, and mostly from the white men who control the media and the schools and the church and the press, and do I really trust them? I don't. Do I really trust them? I don't. Do I really trust them I don't and this one's called there is no morning sky anywhere the blue of the police officers uniform is blue but it is not like the blue of the sky it is not like it is the inside of the sky looking at the rest of the sky or anything like the gigantic water or the feather of a bird from somewhere that has colorful birds the blue on the police officer's uniform is not alive. It does not breathe or have tears. It doesn't shake. There's no laughter in the color. There's no morning sky anywhere which looks this color of blue. It is like the blue color of something that has been dead. It is like when you took all of the blood out of the animal and their body is hanging in the room and the room is silent. The blue is like the emptiness of the floor in the room where the sound is empty and the blood is empty and everything is hollow in the silent room where the animal is dead. And there's no birds in here. There's no birds at all. Thank you.